Hi everybody, I'm Dawn Kirkham and today's video is all about what clairvoyance is and how to develop it. I'll be talking about how we access Sixth Sense information, how it works, and I'll also share with you five things that you can do to practice in order to develop and strengthen this ability. Now, we're used to exploring the world through our five senses, so touch, taste, smell, sight and hearing. Right from when we're babies and as we grow, we seek to test out our environment with our senses and connect it to a language and a set of experiences. And this is what gives our world meaning and understanding. However, as much as we depend on these five senses, they're limited. Our sight is limited to how far away we are from, from an object. Our taste is limited by flavour. Smells are limited by distance and so are sounds and touch. Now because we're so oriented to our physical five senses, we often forget that we have an extension to these in the form of our sixth sense or a non-physical extension of our five senses that extend far beyond the limitations that we experience. When we tap in and utilize our sixth sense, we're able to see, hear, feel, and smell, and even taste beyond these limitations. In fact, our ability to receive information that is not readily perceived by us is limitless. The key to living an intuitive life is to start to hone our psychic abilities so we can access the non-physical information that is available to all of us. So what are these psychic senses? I think most people have heard of clairvoyance. It is often used interchangeably with the term psychic. However, clairvoyance is actually just one of the ways in which we receive non-physical information. So if you are clairvoyant, you have an ability to see non-physical information. It actually translates from a French word as clear seeing. Another way we might receive information is clairaudiently. And this is the ability to hear non-physical. Again, translating as clear hearing, somebody who is clairaudient will be able to hear spirits, guides, angels, and their higher self. For many clairaudient people, they hear words in their head, so like somebody is, uh, is, is talking to them, often in their own voice. Sometimes they do hear voices outside of themselves, but most, mostly it's an internal conversation. Some people interpret non-physical information through feelings, and this is called clairsentient. And it includes emotions of other people, the environment, it can be physical feelings as well. And I have a video on being empathic and um, clairsentient on my channel. So I will uh, link that down below if you're interested to hear more about this. There are a couple of other Claire's um, and I just want to mention Claire Augustine, which is the ability to smell and taste and also Claire Cognizance, which is the ability to know. And I think that this is one of the most difficult um, senses to interpret as the information you just know, but you don't know why you know it and you don't know where it's come from. So I think that's a tough one. Like anything, we tend to have a preference. So this means that we'll have a main way that we process this sixth sense information. For me, I have two, two main preferences. So clairvoyance and clairsentience. My least preferred is clairaudience. While we might be tempted to rely on the main way that we process information, I think that what is important is that we find ways to develop all of our sixth sensibility. So we're able to access and process and interpret all of the information that is available to us. We are all born with these abilities and for a variety of reasons, we stop paying attention to them. We turn down the, the volume, but like any muscles that are not used, they will wither away and become weak. The good news is that just like a muscle, we can build our six senses up so that we can use them to help us to navigate our life, make decisions and all of that good stuff. 
in the videos I'm uploading to YouTube, there are a variety of activities and exercises that you can practice. Um, and this will help you to develop your all of your six sensibilities. But this video is focused on simple exercises that you can do to strengthen your clairvoyance. Before we get into that, let's explore clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is one of the major psychic abilities. And it does mean that we receive intuitive information via images, symbols, and sometimes moving pictures. Clairvoyant images come from our higher self, the collective, the universe, our guides, loved ones, spirits, whatever language you want to put on that. And it's the ability to perceive non-physical information visually. For me, I see either in still pictures, so like a photograph or an image, or in video, although the video often looks like, you know, the old black and white 1920s movies. Um, and sometimes it, that can be hard to, um, to differentiate. Now, sometimes the images are symbolic, so like a rose for love, or sometimes it's like, you know, a person's face or a place. The inner seeing is very subtle most of the time, and it will typically happen within your mind's eye. Sometimes it's just fragments and flashes and not full-blown images or movies. For some, clairvoyant images can be seen in the environment, so outside of themselves with their own eyes. And this has only happened to me a few times where I have seen spirit physically in the space. Sometimes I'll see shadows and flashes of light. One of the challenges with any of the ways that we receive psychic information is to determine if it is your own thoughts, emotions, feelings, internal chatter, or is it spiritual communication? I think that that's one of the most common questions that I get asked and one of the most difficult journeys that we take as you know, developing intuitives. Here are my top tips for determining if it's your imagination or not. So firstly, has it just appeared randomly out of nowhere? So an image or a thought or an inner voice or feeling that just seems out of the blue to appear and not really associated with anything that you're doing or thinking about. I remember sitting on a beach here in Victoria, where I live now, not thinking about anything other than just enjoying the sun and being lazy. I was super relaxed. Suddenly, and out of the blue, I saw a short video of a very sweaty oriental man. He was stripped to the waist and his arms were tied behind his back onto a long bowl, I'm assuming a bamboo bowl. He was on his knees and it was dimly lit. Like I say, it came totally out of the blue. And along with it, I had an intense sense of panic. I sat bolt upright, startling my husband, and it left me shaken as the emotion was so real. Now, this didn't relate to anything that I was thinking about, nor did it relate to where I was, as far as I know. However, it was clear to me that in my relaxed state, I tapped into a memory or even a long distant call for help. Another way that you can determine if it's not your imagination is to ask for more information or to interact with what you're receiving um, more, more readily. So this could be simply in your mind, asking to be shown something, something else to help you to get clear about the message that's being shared. Sometimes I receive an overload of information and it comes in fast and furious, often images one after the other. Um, too fast for me to really lock on and hold anything clearly in my mind. In those cases, I ask to have the images slow down. Sometimes it works and they do slow it down. Sometimes it doesn't. But if it doesn't, I reinforce my psychic wall to block it. It can be too overwhelming to receive so much information at once. If you're feeling an emotion or a physical feeling, check in with yourself. Ask yourself, is this yours or not? 
You should be able to determine this by checking in with, with your body, with yourself. You can also ask, ask whoever it is that's sending the message in that way to you to take a step back. This is particularly useful if the feelings are overwhelming and you just can't, can't cope with them. I wish I had a three-step process for you to follow to determine if it's psychic information um, or imagination, but I don't. It really is a process of experience and practice. What I will say is that the more you stay in control and get curious about what, you're, what you are receiving by asking questions and interacting, the more that you'll be able to make this work for you. So now you know a little bit more about clairvoyance. You may be realizing that you're already receiving information in this way. And if you want to hone and strengthen this ability, there are so many exercises and activities that you can do to strengthen that, that muscle. And I will be posting lots of different ways to do that, lots of videos with different practices that I've used and I can recommend. But for now, here are the five that I know work because I have used them in my own development. Tip number one, meditation. The first thing that I want to strongly advocate for is meditation. Sitting and meditating is probably the most effective thing that you can do. And it has many physical, emotional, mental and spiritual benefits beyond developing your sixth sense. Anyone who knows me has heard me say regularly that this is probably the most effective thing that you can do. Establishing a regular practice of quietening your mind is an important first step in developing and strengthening your clairvoyance. There are a ton of resources on the net about meditation, so I do encourage you to do some research and find a practice that works for you. That's what I did when I was uh, developing my mediumship. I remember finding a chakra meditation on YouTube, first time I'd ever done anything like that. And I went through it and it really was a profound experience for my first meditation. I think that most of us start with guided meditations first and that's good as a start because they usually ask you to, to visualize and this is a helpful way in which you can develop your, your ability to see and, and your clairvoyance. However, I do want to encourage you to go beyond guided visualizations. Trust me when I say you will notice that your clairvoyance ability accelerate if you can move into meditations without any guided visualization at all. Just quietening your mind and going within will allow your visions to flow. I will be posting a candle meditation, which is a really effective way to do this. Remember that meditation is a practice, so you should try and do this every day. You can't expect to run a marathon if you only run once a week. Tip number two, become more observant. Another good way to develop your clairvoyance is to start to pay attention attention, close attention to, to your environment, to your surroundings. Become super observant and take it all in via your sight in as much detail as you possibly can. When you go into a room or a shop or a building, take it all in, drink in all of the information that you can visually um, about what you're seeing around you. Now, some of us are hardwired to notice detail over others. It's an inbuilt preference. Some of us pay attention to everything naturally. But whether it's natural or not, I would recommend you regularly practicing this. Try to recall the detail 30 minutes after and see how you do. Remember, clairvoyance is an extension of our physical sight. So practicing your observation skills will be of immense benefit for you. If you're working in a circle or a group of people, this is a great activity that you can do together as well. You can place seven or eight, or, or eight items on a table or a countertop or a tray while one person is out of the room. When the items are placed, the person can come back and look at the items for no longer than 20 seconds and you might want to time them for that. And then cover the items back up and the individual who was seeing the items will jot down on a piece of paper as many as they can 
uh, remember and in as much detail as they can um, recall. So really describe the items in, in lots of details, colour, size and any other descriptions that they can give. You can take that in turns with different items and it might seem like a simple activity of memory and it is, but it does have a bigger purpose and it helps us to, to visualise and to hone our sight. And this really helps to develop our clairvoyant abilities. Tip number three, keep a dream journal. People with a preference for clairvoyance tend to dream viv vividly. Our dreams are a way of processing thoughts and experiences of the day, and that's true for everyone. But they're also a way in which our higher self and spirit communicate with us. So consider buying yourself a notebook just for your dreams. So a dream journal. Keep it by your bed, along with a pen or a pencil, whatever you prefer to write with. And as soon as you wake up, jot down as much of the dream or as many dreams as you can remember in as much detail as possible. The benefit of keeping a dream journal allows you to see patterns and themes in what you're, you're dreaming. And it also gives you a bit of space to interpret what's coming, coming up for you. And another thing that you can do is to write an intention in your dream journal before you go to, um, before you go to sleep. And then when you wake up, record any images or thoughts or hits that you, that you got. And you'll be amazed just how much your, your, the collective conscious wants to talk to you. And over time, you will notice themes, regular symbols, messages that are coming through uh, really, really clear. And so you can set aside some time to, to look at those and interpret those. It really is a great way to get a dialogue going between you and your higher self. Tip number four is your peripheral vision. So when I was developing as a medium, I was a bit put off by the amount of shadows that I was seeing out of the corner of my eyes. And I hear this a lot with, with people as well. So I asked my mentor about this and she shared her opinion of what we see. She said that our peripheral vision is the least damage of our eyesight. And because of this, we can see non-physical energy and, and spirits more, more clearly. So when we turn to, to look at something with our you know, front arm, with our, our eyes, we can no longer see it because we're now looking at the image directly at it with an eyesight that um, is damaged through age or, you know, TV or all of those other things. So our peripheral vision, we're able to see those higher vib vibrations. She also said that for those people that see things out the corner of their eyes, they're likely to have a preference um, for clairvoyance. And that was certainly true for me. And she sent me an exercise to practice to develop this, which I found really, really helpful and I'll share with you now. So you're going to sit quietly with your eyes open and you're going to breathe steadily. And you're going to focus on an object that you place in front of you. Now, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a pebble, a plant, a pen, a coffee cup, whatever. It'll all work. So without moving your focus, become aware of your peripheral vision. So that's either side of you. In your mind, take a note of the objects, the furniture, the details that you can see around you. If you see shadows or movement, just keep focused on the item in front of you. Breathe, don't panic. Sit for as long as you feel comfortable and make notes on what you saw and felt. And also note any internal vision that, that took place as well. So do this regularly and you will find that your clairvoyant abilities increase. Tip number five, final tip, ask your guides. So this tip helps you to receive images and it will hone your ability to control um, what, you're, what you're receiving and um, make that connection stronger. So in this activity, you'll want to spend a few minutes quietening your mind, um, getting centered and relaxed. Take some deep breaths in and out. Allow yourself to relax. And when you feel ra uh, relaxed, ask questions of your guides. Ask them to send you a message using an image. Stay open. Don't force it. Allow any images to come. 
If you feel it's your imagination, ask again, ask for a different image or a clarifying image and don't get frustrated or discouraged. Stay open and relax. That really is the key. If something comes and you're not, not sure what, what it means, ask them to send you um, something to clarify it. Again, stay open to receive it. At the end of the exercise, thank you guides. And don't worry if you don't get anything. Just try again another time. Remember that this is called a practice for a reason. We have to keep practicing it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you're inspired enough to have a go at some of these exercises or all of these exercises. As I said before, I know they work because they're the ones that I've used regularly as I was developing as a medium. Please share your experiences in the comments below. And if you have any questions or you have something that you want to share with me, but you don't want necessarily to put it in the comments, I'm going to put my email in the description and you can just email me directly. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, give it the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I do hope that you consider subscribing. Remember to hit the bell so that you get notified when I upload a new video. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.